This is a model C-150 Edison record player manufactured between 1915 and 1918. It was purchased by Helmer Swenson about 1916 and played at his home in Stoughton, Wisconsin. Um, this is an old Edison record player from 1916. It opens just by lifting the top and it has a catch there. Put it back down, you just pull the catch forward and it'll come back down. Okay. Um, it has a lip up here, but it's kind of dangerous to uh, hold it by that because it might slip out of your hand and fall down. So it's best to hold it at the bottom. Okay. The speaker is inside here is basically a bullhorn that comes off of the tone arm. Since there's no electricity to this, the uh, uh, sound is all about the needle against a diaphragm here and this is a hollow tube that goes around and comes down inside here to this horn okay you might want to come around here and see this but so the so the sound will come out of here this tone arm it moves across the record from outside to in and uh, this is a crank. This has, uses this crank over here to uh, uh, wind it up. And this crank is removable, but um, spring inside. Right now it's hit. Now, so I'm turning it. It's winding up the spring, and you can wind it till it stops but this is such an old record player I'm afraid to wind it too hard I might snap something so I'm only gonna go a little bit the tone arm and uh, uh, the, the record player itself here I see it has this is the brake when you release the brake that starts the record to turn when you want it to stop you just put it back on there it basically just stops it by friction okay so I'm going to get a record out here. Down here in the bottom is where we uh, have the record storage. And we'll take an old Edison record out of there. And I'm going to play the Stars and Stripes Forever. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to do is, of course, you make sure it's wound up good so it'll be able to go fast enough. This is 80, 80 revolutions per minute. And you op open it up by starting the record player, taking the friction off, and it will start going. Now, you just have to move this by hand, and you move it over to where it's about to start because this doesn't really have grooves in that outside area. And then you lift this lever up and that will lower the tone arm. Like so. Now. You want it off, you just lift it back up. This is actually supposed this is the volume if you want to call it that uh, it actually should have been attached here by welding but that's broken loose but this slides in and out it's just a wire and it goes to a uh, piece down in there that muffles it it's just a a, uh, a round ball that's uh, uh, cloth-like or whatever and when you shove this in there it mutes it so you open it out just to, you can push it back in there to try to try to mute it down so it's not quite so loud so we'll try that and see if it makes much difference Like I said, I didn't have it wound up very far. Okay, so 
I'm going to try to see if I can mute it down a little bit. something that generally isn't needed. Right now it's at the fastest speed. If I turn this little knob over here, it'll slow it down. So apparently if you have some records not playing right, sounds too fast, you can slow it down a little bit. But all the way over to the stop, where I have it now, is the 80 revolutions per minute, which should be the fast the speed that you should be playing it at. This little arm here is supposed to, when, when the record, when the, uh, um, when the, uh, when this moves on into the center of the record, if it has a groove far enough to move it to the center, it's supposed to shut it off. But none of these records have been able to do that. You can see this little arm is supposed to come over here and hit that and stop the stop the uh, turntable. But uh, most of these don't have that extra groove that goes on in. It just gets over here and stops, so you have to do it manually. And basically, that's the whole operation of this thing. There's not much else you can do with it. Um... Just have to move everything by hand, move it out of the way. Again, you start it, let it get up to speed, move this over. It doesn't have the grooves to pull it in on the outside on some of these records, so you got to kind of look down here and see where the start is. And there she should play. These records have not been cleaned, so they're a little bit noisy. If you put this down, you get rid of, rid of, rid of a little bit of that noise and you get more of the music. When you put this back in, you have to be a little careful. If you put it in too far, it can get jammed. There's a little groove up in here right at the front, and you gotta slip it up inside that groove, and then it'll drop right in and be fine. We have a couple of other heads for the record player. This one is basically the same as the one that's in it. Different color, but it's basically the same tone arm. This one here is different. I honestly don't know. I, I've tried to see the configuration, and I don't know how it fits. So I don't know whether this actually goes with this record player or not. Way the way it works, the needle here uh, keeps the amount of weight that's on the record player to play. It's actually quite heavy, which is probably not too good for those old records. And this diaphragm that's up in here is what creates all the noise, and it just comes back through a hollow tube and back down to that speaker. You can see it even you can see it even better on here. This is the diaphragm off the needle that vibrates and creates the sound which has to go through the hollow tube and just comes out uh, from the uh, bullhorn that's down there. And that's the way the old Edison plays. Take a bow. <laughs>